Well, greetings from Cooley Law School. My name is Patrick Corbett. I'm a professor of criminal law here at Thomas M. Cooley Law School in Lansing, Michigan. Prior to being a professor, I was a prosecutor. I spent about 10 years at the U.S. Attorney's Office in Detroit prosecuting federal crimes, and then a little less than three years with the Michigan Attorney General's Office prosecuting state crimes. When I was at the Attorney General's Office, I was helping set up a high-tech crime unit. And in the course of that experience, prosecuted all sorts of individuals who were involved with internet and high-tech related crimes. That is, at least in part, the touch point for my discussion with you today in the course of these video clips. Uh, after being a prosecutor for almost 13 years, I started working here as a professor. Uh, and I've been teaching criminal law here for over nine years, going on 10 years now. Uh, two different types of jobs. As a prosecutor, I was putting people in prison or taking cases to court where I was asking the court to punish people for their bad behavior. As a professor, I'm not doing that anymore. Now I'm teaching the subject matter. So I, I felt a yearning to still connect with people, uh, especially people that might be involved with these crimes in some capacity. But my role now is to help prevent the crimes. As a prosecutor, I, I went after people who, who made bad decisions. As a professor and as a teacher, I want to help people prevent the commission of these crimes. And that's the, that's the focus that I have with you today uh, with regards to cyber crimes. I've gathered a lot of knowledge about this over the years. Uh, in the last well, five, six, seven years, I've spoken at numerous high schools, middle schools, elementary schools, uh, colleges, a lot of different audiences, and I've talked about cyber crimes, the laws here in Michigan, and how they apply to what people are doing over the internet and using high-tech devices. Um, I've learned a lot from these sessions, uh, not only from students, but from the administrators and the teachers that I've spoken with about problems that school kids are facing. I want to confront some of those problems in these video clips, but I want to confront them in a specific way. I want to take uh, an opportunity to take these examples, these situations that students have experienced, and I want to look at the laws and see how the laws um, cover what it is that individuals are doing. Now, you need to be thinking about this from a broad perspective because you may be the individual who has been victimized by some of the crimes, by a cyberbullying situation involving a social network site or a text message or a series of text messages. On the other hand, you might be the person who is doing the bullying. You're doing something that's, that's uh, potentially exposing you to some criminal liability. So at either level, you need to be aware of what's going on. If you are a victim, it's really important for you to recognize that the law has been broken, and maybe you need to report it. Maybe you need to report it to your teacher. You need to report it to your, uh, your parents, uh, to the school principal, or maybe even go to the police about it. And if you're a defendant, you're the person who's actually committing the crimes, then at least you'll be aware that you've made a mistake and you can remediate the problem in some way, or maybe you could just simply stop your behavior. And do this in a way where we're preventing a police officer from knocking on your door or a prosecutor from serving with some kind of papers where you're charged with a crime. Uh, in the course of this discussion, we're going to focus on the laws. And I'm not expecting you uh, to be ready for law school. Uh, I understand that the people who are watching this are probably going to mostly be high schoolers, maybe some middle schoolers, and, and a few others. Uh, I'm not expecting that, uh, uh, that you're going to be so equipped on the law that you're ready to go litigate the case in court. But I'm also going to be pretty direct and tell you about the laws. We're going to go into some details, uh, but it's mostly highlights uh, of the laws. So we're going to look at the laws carefully, and we're going to look at the laws in the context of hypotheticals. Hypotheticals that are based upon real cases, real cases that teachers have told me about, students have told me about, I've read about in the newspaper, read about on the internet, I've seen it court papers supporting the charges for people regarding these types of situations. So it'll be something that hopefully you'll see through these hypotheticals, a real situation that uh, you may have confronted or somebody you care about uh, may have confronted. We're going to cover a lot of different areas, so as you can see from the slide, we're going to be looking at cyber harassment in the context of text messages, in the context of social networks like Facebook and other places like that. We're going to look at a clip involving identity theft issues. We're going to look at voyeurism, where you're looking at somebody secretly without them knowing about it, maybe using a device to enhance your ability to be able to see it or even to record it. Uh, we're going to look at child pornography. In Michigan, we call it child sexually abusive material. Uh, and and how, how is it that the behavior of a student 
with their cell phone camera might get them in trouble uh, regarding the laws involving child pornography. We're going to look at hacking. Um, at least that's one way people use that term. Hacking is, is, is a, a term that I think essentially addresses the unauthorized access to computer systems to do something that you're not authorized to do. Uh, so we'll look at a, a hypothetical involving that context. And finally, we'll look at a hypothetical involving recording private conversations uh, and how the law might apply to a situation where you're recording somebody else's private conversation. And then the last clip, we're going to spend a little bit of time talking about some of the non-criminal consequences that you might face. Uh, even, if, even if a prosecutor and a police officer decide not to do anything about it, are there still some consequences to you that you may not be real happy about? Uh, We'll cover each of those topics in separate video clips, and I invite you to look at those video clips so when time permits. The last thing I want to talk to you about, though, is looking at this slide. You can see uh, this, this question that might be in your head. You're only a kid. Will you actually be prosecuted? Whether you're a middle schooler or whether you're a high schooler, you're thinking, I'm under 18. Come on, the laws really don't apply to me. Well, I'm going to tell you, first of all, that the laws apply to a person, and a person is an adult or a person is a child. It all depends on the discretion of the prosecutor, the discretion of the police officer in pursuing the case. I'm going to give you a real-life scenario uh, to help you understand what I'm talking about. Many of you are probably drivers, and if you're not a driver, you've been in the car with your parent, your uncle, your guardian, uh, and you've seen situations where the adult driver is pulled over by the police, uh, and they're given a ticket for speeding. Uh, on the other hand, there are other times, maybe the large majority of the times, where you pass by the police officer who's out there in his police car, and the driver is obviously speeding, but the police officer doesn't stop you. Why is it that sometimes the police officer is going to give you a ticket, and sometimes the police officer does not give you a ticket? That's discretion. The law applies at all times. The, the speed limit says 25 mile per hour speed limit, and you're driving 35. A police officer has the discretion to pull you over. Why on a given day would a police officer pull you over and not other days? Well, maybe on the day that the parent is pulled over, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's a bunch of parents taking their kids to school. And it's a really busy intersection. And uh, the police officer thinks, enough's enough. There's too many people speeding around here. i got to make uh, a statement here. By pulling this parent over, and having all these other parents and drivers see what's going on, everybody else will slow down and they'll recognize that you can't do this at this particular intersection. That's called deterrence. The police officer has chosen to give a ticket for deterrent reasons. And this is the reason why a prosecutor may choose to take a case involving a minor, a juvenile, a child, uh, even though the large majority of the time the prosecutor wouldn't do the case. If there's enough cyber harassment going on, and the prosecutors heard enough complaints at some point in time, he or she may choose to exercise his or her discretion and to bring the case to court. Why? Not so much to punish this individual, but to deter all those others who might be doing, uh, engaging in similar conduct. It's to send a message to society that we can't tolerate this type of behavior. So juveniles and young adults can and will be prosecuted, so we really need to be aware of this message. Okay, time to explore the laws. I'll see you in the next video clip. Thanks for listening.